the weather is cold and it's the perfect day to make a perfect beef stew. This is going to be good. To start, I'm working with three and a half pounds of boneless beef chuck roast that I'm cutting into like one to one and a half inch pieces. And I've preheated a pot. And I'm also going to be using some salt and pepper to add to my beef because I'm going to brown it very well. A lot of chefs or it is advised to salt and season your meat while on the cutting board. I'm kind of doing it in the bowl. Okay, so my pot is preheated. I'm going to add several tablespoons of cooking oil. And now what I'm going to do is just create a single layer with space in between the pieces because this is going to give the best browning to the meat. If you crowd the pan or the pot, then it's just going to sort of turn gray, release its natural juices and kind of boil. But you really want to get a good brown crust on the pieces. So take your time doing this. I'm going to do this like in three or four batches. So I already salted and peppered one side of the meat, so I'm just going to go over with a little more salt and some cracked black pepper. Be sure to check the description below for the ingredient list and measurements. Okay, so I'm going to be placing all of my browned meat on a baking sheet. You could do this in another bowl. And I want you to see, this is what you're looking for. This deep golden brown crust on the exterior of the meat. This is browning the meat, and this is going to give you color and flavor to the beef stew. I'm going to be working with one large onion, five cloves of fresh garlic, and one celery stick. I'm just going to prep and chop that while I'm browning the meat. And this is what you end up with. And like I said, this was the first batch, and look at the beautiful deep brown coloring on the beef. And it also renders its own fat and juices and then kind of caramelizes and sticks to the bottom of the pan. You want that. That's the fond. So a little more cooking oil and I'm just going to repeat the process. Like I said, take your time. This is not a quick process, but the little extra work you take to brown your meat will yield beautiful color and flavor to this beef stew. So I'm going to turn the pot down because I'm done browning the meat and this is what it looks like. It smells amazing, and all I added was salt and pepper to the beef. Okay, so I've chopped my onion and celery going into the pot. I'm gonna add just a little pinch of this flaky sea salt that I'm working with, add it to the onions and celery, and saute well until everything becomes aromatic and translucent. And once that happens, it's gonna take a little time. I'm gonna add my roughly chopped garlic, my five cloves of garlic. And the pot is just doing wondrous things. Okay, quick saute to the garlic. And I am going to add just a little more of my cooking oil. I'm actually working with avocado oil. You could do olive oil if you want, or veg oil. Okay, saute. And now I'm going to add two tablespoons of tomato paste right into the pot. And I'm going to cook that quickly for like a minute just to sort of intensify the flavor of that. And now... All of the meat goes right back into the pot. And it did just sort of rest and have juices on the pan. You want to add that too. And now I'm going to shake in six tablespoons of all-purpose flour. This is going to help thicken the beef stew sauce as it cooks. So I'm going to coat everything, combine, and cook that flour for about a minute or so, maybe two minutes. Okay. Now I'm going to add one and a half cups of a dry red wine right into the pot. And that's going to start to deglaze all of that fond. So you'll want to work this into the meat and veggies and sort of scrape up that fond. And you'll see that it's going to start to simmer. The alcohol will cook out throughout the entire cooking process and it'll start to thicken. At this point, I'm going to add four cups of beef broth. You could add five cups. I only had four cups, and so I'm going to just add an extra cup of water. In total, six cups of liquid. And if you don't have red wine to add, just add more beef broth. Now I'm going to add some fresh aromatics like rosemary and some sprigs of thyme. I also have one dried bay leaf, and you could use dried thyme and rosemary in place of the fresh. It all works. I would say if you're using dried thyme and rosemary, like a half teaspoon to a full teaspoon goes in there. Okay, 
So I'm just going to give this a little mix, submerge those aromatics, and bring it to a boil. By the way, I am working with a six quart Dutch oven, and here it's starting to boil, so I'm gonna cover with a lid. And at this point, I don't need the stove top. I'm shutting it off, and I'm going to place this in a preheated oven of 325 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna let this cook for the first half for about an hour and a half at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And so here I have a pound and a half of russet potatoes that I'm going to peel and cut, and here I have two large carrots. So at the halfway point, because it takes about three hours in the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm an hour and a half in, I'm gonna remove the lid, and it smells amazing. This beef is not even tender, but I almost wanna eat as is. Okay, give this a stir, and I'm actually gonna start fishing out a lot of the stems and the bay leaf. I think they've done their job, so just kind of take that out. Okay, so at this point, you'll want to give this a taste. And if it needs a little extra salt, pepper, seasoning, add it. Salt and seasoning is to your preference. So I suggest you taste throughout and adjust. Okay, so I'm gonna add my salt and pepper and I'm just gonna give that a little mix. And now I'm going to add my potatoes and carrots. And I cut them into large chunks. Now, if you're cutting them into like coin-sized carrots and small chunks of potatoes, maybe just add it in the last hour of cook time. Okay, so I'm going to give this a stir. I'm going to cover with a lid, and it goes right back into the oven to cook for another hour and a half. Like I stated earlier, the cook time is around three hours or until everything is fork tender. So it has been another hour and a half, like I said, three hours total, and this is done. My husband's going to remove this. We are all so hungry, and you definitely can cook this on the stovetop. You'll just have to simmer at a constant gentle simmer and make sure everything cooks through properly. Okay, so I can't tell you how I just want to dive into this, but I'm going to give this a stir. And I want you to see how tender everything is. I even actually left one potato whole. I don't even know why I did that. I didn't notice when I was filming, but it is cooked perfectly with the wooden spoon cuts right in half. It's so creamy and tender. This is one of the reasons why I love to use russet potatoes for our beef stew. I love the creaminess and texture. And the sauce is just perfection. The meat is tender. I love it. Okay, so oven going on 450 degrees Fahrenheit because I am going to uh, warm up and heat a baguette. And I like to just kind of wet my hands, they're clean, and just wet the exterior of the baguette and place it right onto the oven rack for about five minutes at 450 degrees or until the exterior is crusty and toasty. It's so good. I am going to garnish my beef stew with fresh chopped parsley. Sometimes I like to add peas into the mix. Sometimes I even like to add some fresh corn. I don't know. Make it hearty, make it yours. But this is so good. Okay, so my baguette is done and check this out. Super toasty. And now I'm just gonna serve a bowl with some of that baguette and that is dinner. It's as simple as that. If you want a side salad, you could also serve this over rice. Sometimes my husband does that. It all works. It's so good. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.